Roddy was convinced that in order to realize his ambitions, he would have to leave his sheltered home life behind. But guilt about jeopardizing his family's financial stability and insecurity about his acting skills worried Roddy so much that friends feared he was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. He was in great distress as to what to do with his life. His mother was a very demanding woman. Roddy never had any free time to himself. He felt the need to escape and get away and change his life because he's bright. And it was devastating for Winifred when he left home. But he knew he had to do it to survive as a human being, essentially, and certainly to develop as, a, as an artist. In 1951, the 22-year-old took a bold and difficult step trading in the security and comfort of Hollywood for the hand-to-mouth existence of a struggling actor in New York. When he came out to New York, he really was a fish out of water because he had never done any of these things. He had to grow up very fast and rent an apartment and go on interviews, go on auditions and do all these things that he never had to do before. His whole world was topsy-turvy. But in the cultural ferment of 1950s New York, Roddy McDowell discovered a place where he could reinvent himself. The veteran of nearly 40 films began his formal training as an actor with revered teachers like Mira Rostova and Bobby Lewis, and cultivated a new circle of acquaintances, which included such young lions of the theater as Paul Newman, James Dean, and Montgomery Clift. Oh, Marty Clift was admittedly an acknowledged artist as an actor. And for him to take Roddy seriously and to insist that he examine really the craft of acting and the motivation of a character was a unique and awesome experience for Roddy. In 1953, the actor's hard work paid off when he was cast on Broadway in George Bernard Shaw's Miss Alliance. Superb reviews led to work at the prestigious American Shakespeare Festival, where he opened to more critical accolades as Ariel in The Tempest and Octavian in Julius Caesar. But it was in the 1955 Broadway production of No Time for Sergeants that Roddy made a departure from his refined British image and turned in a totally convincing performance as a Southern GI opposite Myron McCormick and Andy Griffith. I loved working with Roddy. I liked him very much. He played perfectly this redneck bandy rooster from Georgia with never, never a hint of English accent. He played perfectly. In 1957, Roddy's growing reputation as a dramatic actor earned him the challenging role of a sociopathic murderer in the Broadway production of Compulsion a powerful drama based on the Leopold Loeb murder scandal. During compulsion, he was a killer. And it's kind of wonderful to see him do these things because he brought innocence to being this murderer, which is much more scary than somebody attempting to be evil. By the end of the play's run, Roddy McDowell had earned the respect of the New York theater world. But for the 29-year-old actor, his greatest challenges were yet to come. Biography remembers Roddy McDowell. While the Broadway stage reigned supreme as the haven for New York's acting elite, the burgeoning medium of television offered many talented young professionals a lure that was far too tempting to resist. It was during this time that Roddy McDowell appeared in more than 50 programs, including Craft Theater and Lux Video Theater. And in 1958, he starred in Playhouse 90's provocative adaptation of Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. I'm a tattered man. My skin's come loose in places, and I have trouble holding it on. I have to look in corners for the broken pieces of myself. If I find the hand I've lost, I... I pin it to my sleeve so there will be something for people to grasp when they greet me. Co-starring Boris Karloff, Inga Svensson, and Eartha Kitt, Heart of Darkness was a national showcase for Roddy's theatrical abilities. 1960 turned into a banner year for the talented and versatile actor. He received two prestigious awards for Best Supporting Actor, 
a Tony for The Fighting Cock, opposite Rex Harrison, and an Emmy for NBC's Not Without Honor. That fall, he shared the stage with Broadway sensations Richard Burton and Julie Andrews in the much-touted musical production of Camelot. In just ten short years, Roddy had gone from an unemployed child actor to a celebrated performer in both television and theater. He was now ready to return to Hollywood and resume his place among the industry's top stars. In 1961, he was offered the part of a lifetime in one of the most anticipated films of the decade, Joseph Mankiewicz's mega-budget epic, Cleopatra. In the pivotal role of Octavian, Roddy once again joined international superstars Rex Harrison as Julius Caesar, Richard Burton as Mark Antony, and close friend Elizabeth Taylor as the legendary Queen of the Nile. But within months of arriving on location in Rome, Roddy found himself in the eye of a media hurricane when the film stars became embroiled in a scandalous extramarital affair. Although hounded by paparazzi and journalists hungry for gossip, McDowell steadfastly refused to comment. Unwilling to compromise his relationship with Richard and Sybil Burton or with Elizabeth Taylor and her husband Eddie Fisher, 34-year-old Roddy forever earned a reputation as one of the industry's most private actors and most loyal friends. Roddy doesn't talk. He really doesn't talk. You can tell him anything, and he will not tell anyone else. And that's why I think so many powerful ladies love him, because they really know their secrets are safe with him. When the film finally opened in 1963, McDowell's portrayal of Julius Caesar's ruthless nephew heralded an impressive return to major motion pictures. When Mark Antony has died, it is his wish to be buried in his beloved Alexandria, in Egypt, among Egyptians, beside his Egyptian whore. Where is the enemy? Where is Egypt? Show me the way! No! There! There is Egypt! For someone who'd been so successful in the 40s, and so little heard of in terms of movies in the 50s, to be in a major film, one of the most expensive and most publicized films of all time was a feather in his cap and you couldn't ask for a better performance you needn't lower your head before caesar i never did but if he were here i'd be happy to i am caesar if it pleases you octavian look at me if it pleases you After all this time and all that has happened, I suppose you are still beautiful. A turnout of 10,000 New Yorkers jams Broadway for the world premiere of Cleopatra. Across the country, more than 25 million people lined up to see the most expensive movie in cinema history. Featured Roddy McDowell, rated critical raves for his Emperor Octavian role in Cleopatra. That year, the buzz around Hollywood favored McDowell as a leading contender for the Academy Award as Best Supporting Actor. But when a clerical error by the studio resulted in Roddy's name being entered in the wrong category, the Academy had no choice but to disqualify the actor from consideration. An open letter of apology from 20th Century Fox did little to rectify what many in the industry felt was a huge injustice. Over the next four years, Roddy worked steadily, making 12 films in every imaginable genre. From war classics, to thrillers, to spirited comedies. Roddy McDowell, the armed and amorous next-door neighbor. Boy? Yes, a prowler behaving in a very peculiar manner. Why don't we open the living room and talk about it? 